Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From r &E Music. That's right. Your favorite mom and pop guitar shop deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> That's where we are today. And we are here to answer your questions. It's another Ask r &E video. Mm -hmm. And we're going to answer all y'all's questions right up in here, right now. Yep. So welcome to another Ask RNA. We're gonna answer our viewer questions. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe, hit the little bell, you'll get notified of all our videos. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy our videos. Helps out, appreciate it. And uh, today we are actually in the lesson room. One of our lesson rooms. Yeah. Because it is hot in Texas. So hot. And so we can leave the air on and it's not so noisy. Yeah. In the, in the showroom, the air is loud. So it is. we're gonna try to stay cool mm -hmm. and answer your questions. All right. First question, just fun guitar from England where they don't have air conditioners. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they do. It's just not common. So. Not not in homes, I guess. Probably in businesses. I'm sure they do have them in some homes. It's just a lot of homes in England are so old compared to American, you know. They, they do tend to be older. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. More historic, I should say. <laughs> historic. Yeah. Um, it says, Ryan, have you noticed how many artists have moved from Gibsons to other brands? I have seen many of them go to Epiphone, such as Brent Hines, Bjorn Giolet, Rob Flynn, Dave Rude, Lizzie Hale, Tim Skold went from Explore to Jackson, similar shape. Mm -hmm. To Angela, do you prefer musicals to other types of movies? Or does it just depend on your mood? Yeah. So, alrighty. Um, Let's see. Well, you know, I don't know if moving from Gibson to Epiphone counts as changing brands. Yeah. Because it's still the same parent company. Mm -hmm. uh, now, maybe the point was people weren't going to buy or they weren't selling enough of their signature models in the Gibson with the Gibson logo because it's expensive. Right. And, and if you're not, you know, slash, <laughs> the chances of people buying your signature guitar that's a Gibson is probably pretty slim if right. you're not just an absolute A-lister. Right. So having an Epiphone signature model makes a lot of sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's see. Now, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to Gibson artists who leave Gibson and go to other brands too much. Yeah. I mean, but that's, yes, that has been happening for a while. But mm -hmm. that happens all the time. People change brands all the time. Mm -hmm. Comes down to some brands will pay you to be an indoor C. Right. You get a you know you get a commission on each one of your signature guitars that is sold. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you just get a significant discount on the guitars and you don't get a check of any kind. Sometimes you get a commission and you get a little sign-on bonus. We'll give you three thousand dollars right now to become an artist plus mm -hmm. whatever. So every every endorsement deal is different. Yeah. With different companies, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think a lot of that has to do. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that stuff. Tons. And part of it's like, Gibson's like, hey, we made you a signature guitar. Nobody's buying it. So, yeah, we're going to have to drop you. Mm -hmm. And that happens just as much as artists leaving companies as companies dropping artists. But right. no one's going to say, yeah, you know, uh, you know, Gibson dropped me. That's not a good selling point. But mm -hmm. anyways, here you go. Uh, Angela, do you prefer musicals to other types of movies? Or does it just depend on your mood? Uh, I like musicals. I, I do, but I don't like them preferably over any other type of movie. I'm an action movie girl. I like most all action movies. Um, I can sit and watch a shoot 'em up, breaking necks type movie just as well as I can switch over into watch Love Actually. Um, but when it comes to musicals, more prefer no, not necessarily because it has to have a really good storyline. I do like plays that have been adapted to musicals to movies as movies um especially if they're classics like the phantom of the opera or les mis or um fiddler on the roof or any uh rogers and hammerstein really yeah. honestly all the rogers um but um no i'm actually i prefer comedy and action i'm a dude when it comes to movies <laughs> through and through just 100 percent I do. I have seen actually a person post more of a on Facebook. tomboy. Oh uh, yeah, a per, a, uh, a, one of a friend on Facebook posted um, 
score yourself on, you know, one for every chick flick that you've watched. And she was like, um, I'm happy to say I'm only a two because I can't stand chick flicks. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what I score. And there was like, there were 50 movies on there ranging from like the 80s till today. And I've seen every single one except for one. And <laughs> I was like, because I didn't know what it was. I, on a, if I probably knew, remembered the name of it, I probably like, oh yeah, yeah, I have seen that, you know, bits and pieces of it. But I saw, I have seen every single one. So I'm a, ba I guess I'm balanced, but I, if I prefer, I would prefer action films over anything. Your favorite genre of movie is it's action, action film. Yes. Yeah. Not that you hate the others, mm -mm. but if given a choice. Because, I mean, I'm a movie person. I love movies, period. So I'll flip through. And it's aggravating for me to go to Netflix or Hulu or Amazon. And you're going through. I'm like, seen it. I've seen everything. Seen it. <laughs> I've seen, seen it. it all. Seen it. I've seen it all. So my mom was very romantic. You know, she was the musical one. She loved the musicals. I grew up with Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and Oklahoma and Fiddler on the Roof and stuff like that. And my dad was like Clint Eastwood, you know, with Dirty Harry and Charles Bronson and <laughs> all the westerns. And so I had Such I have a, a really good balance. Such a dude. Your yes, dad. my dad is a dude. Your dad's a Dude's total dude. dude. Yeah. So I've seen every John's Wayne, John Wayne movie. I've seen every like all of them, including the World War Two, like Korean War, Vietnam War movies. All the and John. Wayne. Your dad's a man's man. He is man. a man's man. And my mom is the, you know... Girly girl. Girl, girly, girly girl. <laughs> so they balance each other out. So I have a very balanced... But I, if I have to say over any long story short, I do prefer action. Me too. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we get along so well. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thanks for the question, Chris, mm -hmm. from the England Shire. How many people have air conditioners? We want to know. Yeah. Because you, you, you would die in Texas with Because they have, like, apartment complexes. Like, we have apartment complexes. So, not like we have apartment complexes, I don't think. But they have apartment-type complexes. And you would think that they would add air. Well, like, <laughs> you know, like... Uh, but in older houses... There's parts of America. Like, you go up north. north. Like, mm -hmm. Montana, somewhere out. But even in, they don't like always have New England area, not all of them have air conditioners. I don't even understand that. I'm like, why would you not? Like You're if super you go to cheap certain here. parts of New York, um, yeah. depending on how old it is and when the building was built, they don't have. Yeah, but they have window, window units. units. Yeah, they have window yeah. units. They don't have yeah, built in central AC, air. Central, central air. Yeah. Apparently, from what I see on Facebook, some of my friends in England, they don't even have window units. I'm like, That's insane. granted, it only gets super hot for maybe a week or two there. But for that week or two, why not live life luxuriously like we do in Texas when it's 100 degrees today. Yes, but we have like three months of heat. We do. Today's well, to four. Today's supposed Depending to be 100, 100, yeah. 100 degrees, y'all, in Texas today. I'm yeah. not excited. But in Texas, it goes from like 90s in May. It can shoot up to the 90s yeah, yeah. in May until September, December. October. <laughs> it can be 90 in December. So we have May, June, July, August, September, October. At least half of the year is... You know, cap up to 90s at least. It's quite warm. Above so, 80. Above 80. Above 80. Above 85. Above 80 for a significant portion of the year. Yes. Some people love that mm -hmm. art. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Paul Ewing, or Ewing, mm -hmm. from Dallas. Da, da, da. I don't think he's from Dallas because yeah. he's from London. But yeah. anyways. Okay, you guys are dealers, and better yet, I can reach you even if I still lived in London, UK. London. He had to comment about having trouble getting in contact with people about CMG guitars. So here's my question. How much is a US, how much in US dollars is a CMG Mark guitar a basic model? Mm. I have an answer for that, Paul. All right, so the base model, Chris Mitchell guitars, CMG Mark, along with the CMG Ashley, base model mm -hmm. are 799 US dollars. 79999. As of shooting right now, what's today? The 9th? <laughs> August? $799.99. Yes. Yeah. Per near $800. Yes, there you go. Basically, per near $800. Mm -hmm. As of this date, whatever today is, August 9th, mm -hmm. 2019. So if you're watching this in 2023, it might not be. $800. Okay. I'm just saying right now, 
subject to change in the future. But correct. At this moment, <laughs> they're eight hundred bucks due to inflation. Right. Mm -hmm. Things could they they haven't raised their prices really in a long time. So CMG has stayed very steady at that eight hundred dollar mark for mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. mark. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, their base model. Uh, now, granted, if you are in England. And then I know you already know this, but you are going to pay a significant shipping charge to get one of those here from the U.S. Plus, you have import duties. Mm -hmm. Import duties you got to pay for, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, seven nine nine for the guitar. Shipping cost may vary. It's been a while since we shipped anything to England, but last mm -hmm. time we did, it was about 150, 160 bucks. Right. Several years ago. So I don't know if that's the same. And then I have no idea what import duties value, if you have to pay the VAT value added tax. Mm -hmm. I, import, I don't know any of that stuff. So, you know, once you get it there, you, I think they have to cough up an extra money to go get it. So it's not necessarily just the cost. But anyways, right. in the USA, seven nine nine. So there you go, Paul. Thank you for the question. As far as I know, they're still backed up several months. Mm -hmm. on orders because you know if you watched our video of our shop tour there it literally is just mostly two guys building the guitars they only maybe finish one they're building several at a time but usually maybe finish one mm -hmm. a week so maybe maybe two mm -hmm. they only build about a hundred a year so right. anyway there you go paul thanks for the question Tell us more about the air conditioner situation, because I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, can what part, what part of England? Because it's like you're in northern. London. Yeah. London's kind of like South Central. I think so. Right. Yeah. South Central England. I'm from Central. Uh, Cam demand with the next question. Hashtag girly Thor. Hey RNA, hope all is well with my favorite mom and pop shop. So it's starting to get a little cooler in New Mexico, is it? Yeah. Cause it's starting to get hot. It's like 205 now in New Mexico, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're we, hotter they, than us. They down to 150 yes. now in New Mexico. Uh, my family and I have major fall fever, as do we. I love the fall. We do too. Rocktober is my favorite. So yes. my question to you is what y'all going to be for Halloween, LOL? I think my party of three will be the Flintstones. That's cute. <laughs> Hashtag KTMA. That's cute. That yeah, cute. that would be funny. I guess you're going to be Fred, I'm assuming. That would be my guess. That would be great. Yeah. Fred, Wilma, and what was there? Pebbles. 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 That's funny. And Dino was the dog, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, what are we going to be for Halloween? I don't know. Probably nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the last time we really kind of dressed up. It's become too much of a headache <laughs> to dress yeah. up for Halloween. And since we really don't celebrate it, so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, we're not big Halloweenies. No, we're not Halloweenies. I love Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yep. The last time I think we actually kind of sort of dressed like up, two anyways. Years ago? Two, two. You were a vampirist. Uh huh. No, I wore my wig, my afro last year. Did you? Yeah, I think you just wore the my Viking the Viking helmet, helmet. maybe. I just remember the one where I was Rick Grimes. I had my gun. And yeah. you were like a vampire. And like, yeah. We, I scared some children at the door. Yeah. Because we still pass out candy and such. Yeah. If we're home, but, I mean, we're usually still working. We're still at the shop 7 p.m. on Halloween night if it's during the week. So. Yeah. Sometimes we'll put on, like I'll put on my Viking helmet just for the kiddos, just to entertain them. But we personally don't really celebrate mm -mm. Halloween. No, we don't. It is fun to dress up. Yeah. Now and, and then. that's a really cute idea. Yeah. The Flintstones. Yeah. You'll have to get um, like a bowling ball or something because Fred plays bowling with the, <laughs> with the league. A, b a big uh, the, boulder. With the, what is it? The saber, not the, the saber. saber tooth tigers. The, I can't think Astodons. of it. Yeah. They had, because there was like the Elks Club, but they don't oh, have Elks. Yeah, yeah. They was a part of a, a group like <sighs> the Boars or something. Something that was very, remember. you know. Prehistoric. Prehistoric, yeah. The saber cats. That and the Jetsons. The Jetsons. That'd be fun. Oh man, yeah. That <laughs> sounds to be more entertaining. Mm -hmm. George Jetson was not as cool as Fred Flintstone. Yeah, we thought it would be fun if if we did end up dressing up for here at the shop, 
that Ryan go as Thor and Al go as the Valkyrie. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know. That's always it's a actually, good one. It's actually it kind like, of works out. <laughs> it works out perfect. So. I am mighty. Yeah. And I have a plethora of Thor hammers over here. Of course, here he'd have to shave. Shelf. Nope. He'd have to I'm shave I'm going to be everything. like chubby braided Thor. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he goes chubby Thor and not chubby as Thor. the new king of... <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I won't, though. I'm not going to. Not my Thor. Hashtag not my Thor. Yeah. Uh, so there you go, Cam the Man. Thanks for the question. Next question. Okay. Tracy Johnson. Uh, let's see. Two questions. First, what do you think of Hailstorm and Lizzie Hale in particular? She plays the mighty explorer and has great, great vocals as, as well, in my opinion. Uh, being 52, I've seen quite a few bands for the years. Second, the whole locking tuner thing. Are they really better than the old tried and true tuners? Thank you both. God bless. Hashtag KTMA. Have a great week. Okay. You probably don't know who that is. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Mm -hmm. She's, she's very, I don't know if I want to, how I can describe this. Kind of Joan Jetty. Sort of. I mean, she plays guitar. She's a good guitar player and mm -hmm. sings. It's that kind of, um, like Joan Jett and you know, heart kind of stuff, but a little more hard rocking. Not okay. metal really, but just like hard rock. So she's sort of a hard rock. Has that grunge to her voice a little bit? Yeah, a little bit of grit to it. You know, uh, I know guys who are like mega fans. I know one dude. I know a guy in England. He's like a super Lizzie Hale. Like he has. Her signature guitar, the Gibson version, which is quite mm. expensive. It's white. Mm -hmm. It's actually a cool looking guitar. And uh, he got it. His dad got it for him before, right before his dad passed away. It was a, it was a great story. But this guy, a kid, I say kid. He's not. He's twenty something. Mm. He's a big fan. It's like we're friends on Facebook, and he's been backstage. Yeah, backstage, Lizzie. Yeah. I'm like, let me check who this person out because I'm. I like rock. I'm a rocker. Right. And I watched the, like a few videos. I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, she's good. I mean, it's not like really my thing though. I'm right. like, I didn't like think she was terrible, but I didn't think, yeah, I'm an ultra mega fan now. So, right. you know, <laughs> and because I haven't really listened to it very much, we're like, hey, Angela, come check out this girl, you know? Right. Because, you know, because I'm a girl. You're a girl. <laughs> She's a girl. You should watch her play guitar and sing. You would enjoy that. You know, like. <laughs> Is that Aziz from the. <laughs> Aziz! <laughs> Night. No, from the oh. comedy thing that we watched last night. Oh, okay. What's his name? Ansari? Yeah. <laughs> About the crazy rich Asians. That's super. It's like, just because. <laughs> yeah. She's a girl. You're a girl. You would probably appreciate that. <laughs> now that I've seen it, because I watched it with a girl, I now appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So she's, you know, it's kind of thing. I just kind of have like looked up a couple of songs and like, oh yeah, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really, it wasn't really like, oh man, I really like this band or like this right. singer, right. you know. And to be fair, there's a lot of bands that I'm checking them out. People are like, oh, do you like these guys? Well, let me go check them out. Oh, they're okay. Yeah. Not really. It didn't push my buttons toward like, wow, something about this band like really clicks, you know. Something in the way. Yeah. She sings it. Yeah. <gasps> So it's, it's kind of funny what, you know, you, you'll come across the music and you're like, I don't know what it is, right. but I like this. Right. And you can, and there could be other bands you are like, ah, oh, they're all right. Yeah. And, and that should be fine, right? It can be yeah. okay. Because someone else can look at that band that you're like, eh, they're okay. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, this is the best band ever. Right. You know, like, okay, cool. Obviously that pushes some buttons for you, but, you know, I have nothing negative to say. Yes. Just I'm not a major band. Okay. <laughs> The whole locking tuner thing. Are they better? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. I agree. it locks your tune. It locks you in tune. Well, I've Kinda. grown up with a lot of guitars that were not locking tuners. Mm -hmm. And so it does not offend me if I have a guitar that doesn't have locking tuners. Where they're really handy for me is when it comes to changing strings. So I think with a guitar with the locking tuners, you really just shaved off about 30 to 50% of your string changing time. Right. The locking tuners. So for me, <coughs> bless Sorry. you. Sorry. God bless you. You're about to do it again. Is it me? Are you allergic to me? No, I just dust in there. It's the dustiness. <laughs> I must dust after we eat. It's the guitars. They're dusty. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's 
on string changes. That's where the benefit comes in. Uh, I don't necessarily think that locking tuners improve tuning stability. Right. You know, but because, you know, I've had ones that they go out of tune just like anything else does. But they do definitely make restringing less of a headache. And so that's that's what I like about locking tuners. Yeah. So there you go, Tracy. For that reason, I think they are superior. I like them. Mm -hmm. Next question, Metallica29. Hashtag girl Thor, have you noticed they slow down? Oh, that was weird. You okay? Yeah, I do. Get some, get some water? Yes, we'll be right back. Allergies. Ooh, yes. Yep. Okay, Metallica29, have you noticed the slowdown of musical instrument sales? Or is that just me looking at the used market? Hashtag hate DMA. Mm. Um, not, I mean, not necessarily. Not For us, it's always been, there's there's seasons of busy and then seasons of it kind of lulls. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been doing this for 10 years now. There's times where it's very busy. There's times where it's kind of down. Uh, for us, not really. I mean, we sold, looks like, a couple weeks ago, we sold like three guitars in one week and it's like, wow, it's kind of quiet. And then we sold a bunch and then mm -hmm. it's kind of quiet. And then we sell some more and then it's quiet. And then, so it's I nice. haven't necessarily noticed that, but um, there are definitely, definitely sort of seasons where it's busier, you know, and going into the fall toward Christmas and right after Christmas is usually the, the biggest time for instrument sales. Mm -hmm. But we sold stuff in the spring and, you know, just again, it's like two weeks ago in, in the dead of summer, which is normally kind of a lull lowest. period really um i mean we sold several just like bam 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 we're just wow okay we sold like mm -hmm. five six seven guitars in like a couple of weeks i was like oh okay all right so could be the used market but you know there's no there's no real predicting that stuff i was just talking to uh one of our manufacturers yesterday and they're like man you never know what's gonna happen you know, it's, it's up. It's, I mean, you can predict, you can look at the last, you know, five years or seven years, eight years. If you've tracked everything, you can go, well, historically, we, this has happened. But, right. but things are always ebbing and flowing. So <clears throat> All the time. for us, no, I haven't really noticed that. It might just be in your area where you are. It could be slowing down. Right. But it'll pick back up. Definitely. Yeah, because people always want to buy guitars. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next question, multi sooner one. For a beginner, would you recommend a Squire or Yamaha? Mm. Ooh, great question. Multi sooner one. Personally, I mean, if you're looking at the most affordable versions put out by those companies, I think Yamaha does a better job. You know, like if you've got a 189 Yamaha and a 189 Squire, I think acoustic or electric. Yamaha tends to do a little bit better job, in my opinion, on the more affordable guitars. Mm -hmm. Yamaha does a great job. And they're, uh, you know, especially in the budget demographic, that budget sub 200, sub 300 range, I mm -hmm. think Yamaha puts out a slightly better quality instrument. Right. But it says Yamaha, not Fender Squire. So it just, you know, it just depends. But I, I like the Yamahas. So I think that's a great choice. Can't go wrong usually with the Yamaha. Pacifica or something like that. Thanks for the question, multi sooner one. Next question, Carlos Lamas. Guitar question. I've been looking at several guitars and have settled on the following two: a Schecter Hellraiser Hybrid PT <laughs> and a Chapman ML3 Pro. Both are obviously T types. What's your opinion, having been a former Chapman dealer and currently Schecter dealer? I'm learning, I mean, learning guitar player that is an old fart, <laughs> 51. I like blues, classic rock, and early metal, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer. Hashtag drive to 10,000 subs. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, we are sort of creeping up on 10K subs. We're at, <laughs> I think, 7,400-ish subs right now. That's yeah. pretty cool. 10,000 will be a big, that'll be, big that'll be a for big us. thing, actually, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 10,000 in 10 years and 10,000 subs. That'd be awesome. But uh, uh, Schecter Hellraiser Hybrid PT or Chapman ML3 Pro. Uh, honestly, I would probably lean toward the Schecter. Just simply because uh, should you need any after purchase support from the company, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you really can't get much support from Chapman, honestly. And even at when we were dealers, because we were Schecter dealers at the same time we were Chapman dealers, we had some guitars with issues, and it's like getting some kind of dealer support from them was pretty much non-existent. Mm -hmm. It's just not. It was it was up to me to like, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, great. This this guitar's bridge is jacked up. Can you see me a new bridge? Cricket, cricket. Wait a month for an email <laughs> to figure out how to get a replacement bridge or a tuner. I'm like. And whereas with Schechter, ringy dingy, call yeah, him up. We actually had this conversation earlier. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I need a thing. No problem, man. Got you taken care of. Boop. Uh, I mean, the dealer support and therefore also the customer support after care. Right. Uh, it's it's not even a comparison right. between the two. So well, Schecter. it helps that Schechter's been around for a whole heck of a lot longer than, yeah. than Chapman. They've got the infrastructure to take right. care of that. And, and the man force and just everything else that the yeah, other company doesn't. That is true. So, you know, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the Shekers. Yeah. Now, I've had a lot of the, well, as you might be able to see, there's a Chapman over there somewhere mm -hmm. in Iraq. But, uh, yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with them. Mm -hmm. um, but really, that to me, that's the, the after sport. Because you can take pretty much any guitar if you have the know-how and you can fix things and do things and you know tweak stuff that needs to be tweaked you know but the thing is like with the Schecter generally other than shipping like listen guys stuff happens in shipping when something's going from California to Florida mm -hmm. on a UPS truck mm -hmm. and they're chucking those boxes and throwing them and stuff like stuff can happen mm -hmm. and hope most people are kind of learn I've learned that I think yeah well the guitars are out tuned Guitars out of tune when I got here. I'm like, well, you know, it was 70 degrees in California, and then I went through New Mexico, and it was 105, and then it got to somewhere overnight, and then, you know. Yeah, and <laughs> dropped 40 degrees. And... Yeah, and then thrown from one truck to another mm -hmm. to another, right? So in shipping, stuff can happen. These things do happen. But in general, you know, you get a quite extensive QC setup check from Schecter when it leaves those guys in California. Even the ones that are made in, you know, Indonesia, imported, they get a quality control check in California. Then they go out to the dealers. Then hopefully, if you have a smaller dealer, you know, we usually tend to go over things before we ship it as much as we can. You know, places like Guitar Center is less likely to get, you know, a thorough exam mm -hmm. before it makes it to you. But, yeah. So my answer is checked her. Thanks for the question, Carlos. <laughs> Next question, Psycho G. Question, how does a Tele style guitar get that twangy sound? It seems that everyone is like that, but I have heard that sound, but I have heard that sound come out of any other guitar. Yeehaw from Ohio. Guitar. Guitar, I think he said, but I, maybe I have not heard that sound. He says, I have heard that sound. Uh, well, you know, for the most part, it's the pickups. Mm -hmm. I mean, 90% of the sound I would say is the pickups. So, right. you know, it's the pickups. <laughs> right. That's probably why he said he's heard that sound come out of other guitars. So it must not be the telly shape. It's actually the telly pickups. The yeah. pickups in the telly that you would have also in another guitar that might not have the same body shape or the thickness or the thinness. But it's the pickups it, it, that, yeah. that delivers it. It's got to be, in my opinion, it's probably a combination. It's the it's the pickups. Mm -hmm. Maybe the position of the pickups in the bridge because... Do I have one? I don't have a Strat in here. You know, maybe the angle of the pickup in the Tele bridge as it angles across the strings, possibly. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I think it's the pickups. Yeah. And the electronics, mm -hmm. really. Could be the body, but you know, I had a, uh, I briefly had a Telecaster that was a Nashville Deluxe mm -hmm. made in Mexico Tele, but it was, it had the same kind of pickup configuration as a Strat. Mm -hmm. So I had like the three singles. It was like a hybrid of a Strat and a Tele pickup wise. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounded very much like a telly. There's a video way back. Maybe if I can find it, I'll link it in the description here. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded very telly-ish, but to me, you know, with the right settings, you know, telling the difference between a Strat and a telly. Well, there's a difference. 
But as far as what it is, to me, I think it's pickups. Mm -hmm. That's why a, a telly is a telly. We should do a blind comparison, but I don't own enough strats or tellies to sit down and kind of shoot that out. That would be a fun thing to do though. Yeah. All right, thanks for the question, Psycho. If anyone else has an opinion on why a telly sounds like a telly, please leave it below. Love to read mm -hmm. your thoughts. Next question, Denim Dude. What are those T-style guitars behind you? Well, that last week, obviously, well, here was one of them. <laughs> uh, T-style telly is this particular one. We had two of them on the wall behind us. This is a fire tone. Fire tone. It's just a uh, basic, you know, import, affordably priced, you know, around 200 to $249 priced import telly. That's all it is. You know, we kind of fall into that whole Squire, Yamaha, you know, thing. Mm -hmm. 249 under. Now, this is kind of not a local guy, but uh, a friend of a friend. A friend of ours, John, who has a music store in Bossier. Yeah. Bossier, I was about to say Shreveport, but Bossier City, mm -hmm. which is right outside of Shreveport, right. Louisiana. John has a store and he has a friend whose side business, he started, basically started his own little guitar company, which is just, you know, having them imported from overseas, which is what everybody, everybody does. does. Schechter, Chapman, mm -hmm. <laughs> ESP, Fender, you know, uh, and has it specced out. He has his own spec. He has his fire tone label on it. And uh, so just as a... Um, kind of like a side hustle outside of his other job. He's like, you know what? I have some ideas for colors and specs and woods and I'm gonna try this. And so he's uh, he just needed some stores. So he's obviously friends with John and Bozier. So John's got his guitars there and mm -hmm. we're friends with John. John's like, hey, you should check out my buddy uh, Jimmy's guitar line, Firetone. I'm like, yeah, bring him on over. We'll check him out. So you've probably never heard of him, I'm sure. This And they're relatively you new. Now. You have now, but you, you have, have heard, heard of him. I mean, they're only probably less than a year old mm -hmm. as being in business doing this. And uh, kind of a local, not local, but... Semi-local. Semi-local. Like, hey, I got these guitars. You know, here's here's what you know you can have them for and you sell them for this. And right. see what happens. And we've already had a student buy one because they're like, that's pretty. <laughs> she was just like, I like that. It was, mm -hmm. again, shop with your eyes. She liked the color. And, you know, she's bought it, she's played it in her lessons, and she digs it, and uh, she could give a crap what the, you know, who, who logo is. Who like you. Know. What the story behind it. What's the story? Where was it made? Who's the master luthier who built that? Yes, is it, is you it know. Japanese or North, South Korea? Is that made in Korea or, or Indonesia Mexico or China? Or America? Or, you know. She doesn't care. Yeah, she doesn't care. <laughs> Which where a lot of our, you know, a lot our of our students in that, that age youngins. bracket, they're like, they don't really care. Does it look pretty? Oh, I like the way that looks. And I'm going to pick it up and play. How does it play? Does it play good? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, great. So yeah, so there you go. <laughs> People start in guitar companies all over the place, right? Interesting story. I, I thought it was interesting because we've kicked around the idea over the years in the back, you know, of our minds. Like, you know, the next step is always to have your own house brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of companies who have their house brand guitars. I mean, Guitar right. Center has Mitchell Guitars. Mitchell Guitars is just a name they put on a lo on a guitar. I mean, that that kind of a thing. There's a lot of companies, like, who's it now? Sam Ash bought out, oh, I can't remember their name. Mm -hmm. Have their own, basically, their own line of guitars now. Um, World Music Supply kind of bought out Diamond Guitars, and so the people who own World Music Supply, the retailer, owns Diamond. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's kind of, now they still have other dealers, but, um, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I've kicked it around. My friend, Anthony, mm -hmm. Flipside Music, Denver, Colorado, which we have not mentioned in the last few videos. Now we have. I was on a streak. We've talked about that, having our own, you know, brand of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris Mitchell, Chris Mitchell Guitars. Now they have, they have a store, but they also have a guitar brand, but it's sold through other stores, so. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of curious. I'm kind of watching like, huh, all right, well, what's the quality like? How'd you do that? 
how did you go about placing the order? I mean, we've done factory direct stuff a long time ago, but it was still an intermediary in between it, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, but yeah, that's that's what they are. So thanks for the question. Did I'm dude? And stay tuned. Maybe someday we will have our own line of RNA music products. That's something that's always floating around in the back of my head. Uh, next question, Terry Starks. Hey, Angela, if you haven't ever seen a UFO, what is the craziest paranormal or unnatural thing you've ever seen? <laughs> we were talking about UFOs. Yes, we were. Last week. Um, and then question for next week. Me and Baby are thinking about making a trip to first Monday sometime this fall after it cools down. What's mm -hmm. it truly like? And what's the best part and things to see or do? And what's the worst? And what to stay away from? Thanks for everything. All right. You want to cover the paranormal? Paranormal. Paranormal. <laughs> what's, the, what's the most paranormal stuff you've ever taken? You know. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess the one thing that stands out was when we were at Paul, Ryan and I were I was dating. Let's say at Paul's house. At Paul's house. Yes. The Paul, bitter basement. Um, Paul's old, very you know, the house. The long lived time, in a haunted lived, house. Yes. Well, the house that he previously lived in, and the house that he lived in now, lives in now. Um, was his mom's house and the whole bottom floor of the house was not finished. It was mostly just plywood, plywood. and sheetrock. Mm -hmm. And um, Paul lived in the Jack and Jill bedroom upstairs. There was like kind of like a lofty two bedrooms that were kind of built in the lofty area of the, with a bathroom in the middle. And one was like a bedroom and the other was like storage and another kind of bedroom. But <clears throat> the stairs up didn't have like a railing or anything. It was just plywood all the way up to his, where he actually stayed. Yeah. The only the, part of the house that was really kind of finished out was the, was the two bedroom, upper bedrooms. Ma the upstairs. Guest bedrooms upstairs. So um, Ryan and Paul worked at Pizza Hut at the time here in town. And Ryan, I guess we were going to go out that night or we were just going to stay in and hang or something. Yeah. But he had to finish a shift at work. So I stayed, Ron's like, you can stay at Paul's house. And um, when we come over, I was we'll, living with we'll, Paul at the yes, time. Yes, exactly. And we'll watch movies and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, okay. But he told me like, hey, you know, you're out here back in the middle of kind of, not the middle of nowhere, because literally smack dab in the middle of town. In town. But it was in an off road that no one really knew about. You kind of would stumble upon these houses kind of thing. You have to be a native It was Canada, by the right? lake. Back yes. in the woods. Kind Perfect of setting for a Friday the 13th movie, you yeah. know, with the lake and like, you know, Jason coming out yeah. or something like that or Michael Voorhees like type situation, which doesn't help because Paul has every single one of those action figures scattered throughout his house. Mm -hmm. But about a mile down the road is Walmart. Yes, exactly. I mean, Literally yeah, walking distance is town. Um, but so Ryan and Paul were at the house. And Paul, we've talked about Paul in the past that there was, you know, weird stuff that would happen there. And everybody had their story. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, and that because that stuff doesn't really bother me. TV would come on. At all, yes. And go off And all by kinds itself. of stuff. So I'm there by myself. And the guys are at Pizza Hut working, you know. And, of course, this is pre cell phone era, this is beeper era, you know, during this time in the 90s. And um, I'm watching a movie and I hear like a door shut. So I turn down the movie and I'm listening because I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to get startled because I can when I get into a movie, because I'm a movie kid, I get into the movie where you can be like, Angela, Angela, Angela. And then I finally snap out of it. So I'm like, let me make sure that no one's walking up. So I'm listening, and then I didn't really hear anything. Turn up the movie, then I hear steps, footsteps, like going up the staircase because it's plywood. So you can hear all the creaks and all the stomps, and it was like they're purposefully making noise to go up the steps, and then it stops at the door that I had shut to Paul's bedroom. So I'm sitting there waiting, like waiting for them to go ha ha or something like that and nothing happened and i was like ryan like really loud nothing and i was like paul like i get mad now because i'm like if it's paul i'm gonna kick his butt and like nothing so i go over to and of course before ryan left he was like since you live since it's out here 
and there has been because people think the house is abandoned because when you look in it looks like it's you know nothing and people will come in and steal copper and wiring out of abandoned yeah. houses and he had stuff. had his house broken, broken into, into before. before and so he's like well the gun is under there and i was like i know how to handle a gun i've been I've, I've i'm able to do that so i went to like put my hand like get go get the gun but then i call pizza hut and i'm like you know please say that they're like you know, hoping, and no, both of them were there. So I'm like, hey, are y'all here at the house? And they're like, no, we're, you know, Paul, I said, is Paul there? And he's like, yeah, Paul's here. I, I'm lo I think you're like, I'm looking at him right now or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, I think someone's here inside the house. And Ryan's like, well, lock the door and you know where the gun is. I'm like, yeah, I do. And uh, later on, I'm waiting because it, it's like you can, see, you know how you know when someone's like behind the door, someone's like right up against you. That's how it felt. Like the temperature and the pressure of the room like changed. It was like heavy and like my, almost like my ears would pop type pressure. And I knew that there was somebody on the other side of the door and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna attack this person. You know, like if they're just waiting to attack me, I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna, you know, get it over with. And so I opened up the door and there was no one there. And I didn't hear anybody go back down the stairs. It was like, they went up and then there was nothing or they were there and I just didn't see them. So that was my, that's yeah. my story. And there's and always that's just been, one of, of many stories. Paul stories. could tell you all kinds of stories. Oh gosh. Yeah. We can have a whole paranormal Paul experience of stuff uh, for that. But that mm -hmm. was like the most intense, like. What, what was that? What there is the something heck? out there. Because honestly, it was like, I don't even know how high the platform was, is like. 16 feet. Yeah. Something like that to you know, where the platform is by the doors and it's just a drop. It just drops off. So there's no way they could have jumped down and me not hear them mm -mm. or ran down the stairs and me not hear them. And a part of me thought they they hid in the other room and they were waiting to come through again, you know? So I went through, I did. I went through all the rooms and nobody. With the gun. With the gun. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So Crazy stuff, my... man. Mm-hmm. Uh, question for next week. <laughs> On a lighter note. <laughs> On a lighter, weirder note. Uh, first Monday. Yeah. First Monday. What it's truly like. Best part. Things to see and do. What's the worst? Stay away from. Hmm. Um, definitely do not come in the summertime. For those of you who don't know, there's a flea market. Yes. Here in Canton, Texas. Yes. And it is literally like the largest one in America. Yes. So our town is a small East Texas town. But population. The whole town. <laughs> population of like 3,500 people inside the city limits. Mm -hmm. maybe 10,000 people outside of the city limits who live in the country, you know. Mm -hmm. But on one weekend out of the month, we have this flea market, and there may be 100,000, 200,000 people come through our town because it's just huge, just acres and acres and acres and acres mm -hmm. of like an outdoor shopping flea market thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like your rinky-dink little flea market down in the corner with like five people there selling stuff. It's like... The whole town. Yeah, it's... And people travel from all the, like, the tri-state area. The tri-state. They do. The, like, the Oklahoma, state. even our, there's people from Arkansas and Louisiana. All over the all over. country, honestly. Yeah. That, that's all they do is they get in their RVs and they have trailers and they travel and they have their... They're their like month, carnies. They have their month scheduled out every month and every first of the month they come here. So... So look up First Monday Trades Days. Canton, Or Texas. First Monday Trade Days. Canton, yes. Texas. Google it and you will, you know. Get the tour. We have videos. It's we, on Instagram. We've done vlogs. They have their own Instagram page. Yeah. But, uh, so, do not come in the summertime because it's stupid hot. The worst part, I think, is the walking. I mean, you can get, you can rent little scooters, mm -hmm. which I would probably do. I would recommend You know, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Rent the scooters and just... Mm -hmm. you can, Worth every penny. Yeah, like the little scooters you get at Walmart. If you're, yeah. like, hurt your leg, you get... Yes. You know, drink lots of water anyways, because even in Texas in November might still be warm. It can warm. be warm, right? Yeah, come like October first Monday, November. October first or Monday, November, those or would be the ones to come Monday. because the weather is good. Yes. Uh, worst thing about it is the people. Yeah. Like how many people there are on a busy one, and if you're walking, the walking because it's huge. You can't you can't see the whole thing in one day. If you wanted to go down every single aisle and see every single booth, you could not do it in one day. Nope. You might not be able to do it in a weekend. Nope, you can't. Uh, because there's too much of it. And whenever you think you've seen 
parts of First Monday, there's more First Monday. There's more. <laughs> there's, there's more. But, yeah, over there's there? more. Because the like our main one of our major highways that runs through Canton, um, north to south, is Highway 19, and it splits First Monday for the most part. And so on. Let's see. West of 19 is the majority of First Monday. Um, that's where all the arbors and the, the Civic Center and a lot of the grounds, people who just have stuff on the ground, like you'll just have this old mom and pop with a ratty old trailer pulling out stuff from the 70s <laughs> from their kitchen, you know, like from stuff like that to a very eclectic, you know, farmhouse, like Chip and Joanna Gaines type stuff. And then you'll have the real antiques and then you'll have mm -hmm. people selling plants and you'll have uh, and then in between stuff. every once in a while is a food trailer. Um, Lots of food but trailers. But then on the east of 19, if you go up the hill down Highway 64, then you're going to go up in the mountain. No, that's west. You got those reversed. If I'm going north, south, east, west. I'm facing North 19 and all the west side because it says we in the middle. It's east. Weast. <laughs> it's weast. Isn't that right? <laughs> to the east is the mountain. To the west is. Is all the rest is, of First Amendment. Is the old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yes. Maybe I'm reversed. <laughs> I could be So possible. you go east of 19 because I'm looking at north, south, east, and west. So east of 19 going towards 64, on 64 you have all of the yeah. mountain. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the animals. And, that, and, all the, and then 64 splits the, all the mountain, which has live music and more... Um, wood carving and all the whittlers and think. the fiddlers and all the and then on the other side the south side of that is the animals and you can buy like llamas, llamas and chickens and, dogs and iguanas and, cats and dogs and, and cats and cows and guinea pigs. I think there was ostriches and I think we had a camel. One There's year. like a live animal section you can go buy. Mm -hmm. We bought our first schnauzer as a couple there. We did for one hundred. I think I've probably been. They call it Dog Monday. They, um, I've probably been to Dog First Monday twice yeah, in my I think life. Me too. Because probably it with is me. So, it is so hot, and when it's hot, you don't want to go to the animal section. It's like going to the zoo on a really hot day. A very, very bad zoo. Like a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very, it's interesting, and you'll find a lot of stuff. They also have the birds, and they have all kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, so it's go to... Um, do your research and go, you know, take your time. You want to go to the main area. You want to go to the I main area. A lot of it is covered. So if it does yeah. rain, you will have a place. There's lots of great food and a yeah. um, bunch of fun, fun Food's stuff. the good part. Funnel cakes, kern dogs. But if you want a deal and you want to actually... Um, Find some nuggets of treasure. Right, or um, haggle a price, then go past all the cover to where you're out and open that it looks like an actual yard sale. Yeah. <laughs> when it looks like an actual garage slash yard sale, then you can actually haggle some prices. But the people underneath the coverings, those are professional. Yeah, and that stuff's not cheap. Those like, like you boutique. think you're gonna go to a you're gonna go to get a deal at yeah. a flea market? No, this is like no. There's no, no deals there. It's, you're not going to get Walmart prices there. It's like a shirt like this, literally with just like howdy y'all on there will be like $75. Yeah. It's, like seriously. Yeah. You know, like I want a howdy y'all or a Texas shirt with a star in it. It's like I'm from here or home or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, when you go to like theme parks and you're buying a souvenir. $3,000. And <laughs> super expensive because it's the experience, you know? Yeah. That's there is that, that but if you hunt, you can find the killer deals. Yes, and every so often in pockets of between those people are the people that you can actually haggle, but you have to you have to know. Them. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's intense. I think the best part is usually the food. We try to avoid it at all costs. Yeah, we and used to have a concession stand there. Yeah, like, but we do not have a booth. R and A Music does not and will not ever have not. a booth down at First Monday. No. Because mm -hmm. we used to have another business down there, and that I did for years and years, and like yeah don't want to go back all right <laughs> there you go <laughs> if y'all come in come come by if you come out if you come on a saturday once you leave there run by arnie music and say howdy because mm -hmm. we'll be here from noon to four on saturday right. on saturday not at first monday arnie music <laughs>
<laughs> All right, final question. Here's a hot topic one. Uh, Walking Dead 1369. Well, there's two. It says best Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. And then thoughts on Gibson destroying over 300 new but unsold Firebird X's and an undisclosed amount of 335s. Sorry, other viewers. Gibson just keeps giving us fodder. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll cover the Sherlock Holmes thing first. Favorite okay. Sherlock Holmes? Ooh. The, the book Sherlock Holmes, the original? Yes, the book. He is my favorite. I'm not familiar with him because I don't think I've actually... Well, we have the complete... Do we? Yes, we do. It's a giant book. Oh, gosh. It's real beautifully leather bound with gold lettering on it. I should read it because I love... I used I used to love to read a lot yes. when I was younger. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's all the stories compressed into one big book. And I'm, all, I'm like the book's getting bigger as yes, I... It's I, this big. It's like... All the, gung, gung. No, so any really, of the television or like, movie Sherlock's do not compare to the original... Mm -mm. Uh, but I have, if I'd but... have to rank it, I do like Robert Downey Jr.'s interpretation of Sherlock Holmes and as well as I do love Jude Law's interpretation of Dr. Watson. I do. Yeah. I like the, a lot of the original BBC guys. I can't tell you what the actors' names are. I can't remember them because I watched them when I was really, really young and I haven't seen them since. I remember those. Those stick out. Um, I do not like the new Sherlock Holmes on CBS, um, the British guy and Lucy Liu. I can't remember his name. Lucy Liu is Watson? Yes, Lucy Liu is Watson. Even though she does a remarkable job, she does a good interpretation of Watson. It's just still too feminine and I don't, I don't care for that. Um, remember Action Girl. Because they changed the character. They changed it too much. Um, but I'd have to, if I have to say the number one interpretation I would have to go with um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Bernard Cumbersnatch. Yes, I'd have to say Benedict is a remarkable Sherlock Holmes. He is as close to the book, I think. Benny that I see. Cucumber Match. Yes. What's his name? Yes. And um, what's his name? Is it Martin Freeman? Yeah. Who plays Bilbo? Bilbo Baggins. Yes. Bilbo as, Baggins is Watson. Dr. Watson. And Smaug as Sherlock. Yes. They are spot on for a modernized because obviously it's modern right um it's not a, it's 18th told in, century yes but they are and it's the whole thing it's lestrade it's mm -hmm. you know yeah it's everything like they get every character that you love the nemesis just the proxy you know, just yeah it's good so i would say benedict Cumberbatch benedict Cumberbatch is Cumberbatch, my yeah. favorite sherlock holmes or the Great Mouse Detective from Disney, whichever one. <laughs> it could be that guy. And then Robert Downey Jr. Because Robert Downey Jr., he's not British, so... Right. So that kind of takes away. It's, right. It's like saying, you know, um, was Johnny Depp's your favorite pirate portrayed on, you know, British pirate? Because he's not British. Right. He should be, though. Yeah. Technically. So, I don't know. I agree with that. I like... I like... Robert Downey Jr., the the movies of him doing, I like, I really enjoyed those. Like, I could watch them mm -hmm. several times, so I'm like, that's really good. Yeah. And then we've watched, I've watched by proxy, mm -hmm. because you were watching that one. The Benedict, I got my parents hooked on the, the Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> ones. I watched those, because she's watching them on Netflix or whatever, and I'm yeah. like, well, I watched them on PBS originally. Looking at my iPad, I'm like, what are, you, what, are, what are you watching? Theater. I'm like, oh, it's like, it's Bilbo and Smaug. That's weird. Okay. I'm like, hey, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, I agree with that. <clears throat> yeah. You haven't watched the last few episodes, though, either. How many seasons are there? Three. Three, yeah. Three, I'm behind. Almost four. If I have any extra time, I can go watch There were them. talks about, because they were both doing the Hobbit mm -hmm. movies. They got busy few, with movie and then, roles. And then Benedict was doing Star Trek at the same time, because yep. he's um, Khan. Khan. Um, which and I then... did not like. Um, no. Mm -mm. Yes, and then, and then Doctor Strange, and then Doctor Strange. So he's been so busy, but and so Martin Freeman was also in the Black Panther. Black Panther. He was also in the Marvel universe. So um, they right before one of those like parallel type movies between the Hobbit and all the Marvel movies. I think, or I think it might have been Star Trek. They were talking about doing a Sherlock Holmes movie. 
Oh wow! Off of because they have such a cult following, following of now of that. So well, and they're big enough stars; they could it would totally swing it. It would produce its own following. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the same thing with Downton Abbey; they're coming out with a movie in oh, the fall. Yeah. There, I'm super like, excited about that. What? I can't yes, wait. That's shut. Up. <laughs> that would be so. See. See, that's the side of me that I love the romance part of it, but it's also just really good writing and an amazing cast of actors. Great actors, right? Yes, very great actors that are actually British. We're British. Playing British roles. British people playing British actors? What? Tom Holland, Spider-Man could be in that. He's it British. sure could. Oh, Tom. Oh, no. He's a cutie. I like him. I like him, too. I hope we still haven't seen Far From Home. But... No, yeah. All right, so thoughts. So here's what happened. Gibson, somebody released a video. They had all these, the Gibson, the Firebird X, mm -hmm. which was a wildly unpopular <laughs> guitar they came out with. And everybody's like, right. what is this crap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it had robot tuners and it had some kind of built-in electronic kind of crazy stuff. Anyway, so it did not sell. Yeah. So anyway, Gibson decided to destroy them. So there's a video of like a big like front end loaner, like, you know, Caterpillar. And they had them all laid out on the ground and they drove over them with this huge like bulldozer machine to crush them and destroy them. And a dude filmed it. Like, hey, here's us destroying all these guitars. And people are like, what the F, David Blaine? It's like, we should have given them to charity. Like, why would you destroy these brand new unsold guitars? And then, of course, the Gibson comes back later. He's like, well, we had to destroy them because there were dangerous materials in the guitar. And the people are like, like what? Like it's some radiation, plutonium. It's some nuclear, or some unshielded plutonium in the Firebird <laughs> X's. We had to dispose of them. Gamma radiation by really running over them through. with a bulldozer and then burying them in dirt, and then setting that dirt on fire. <laughs> right, and nice so motive. and some people are like, mountain. we're trying to figure out what hazardous material could have been in these guitars because you did sell some. Right, are they, are you, are they trying to say like lithium batteries? I'm like. And everything we got's got lithium batteries in it. There's, so they're just they're shooting themselves in the foot again, you know. So my thoughts on that, well, El Toro Pupo. El Toro Pupo. You know, I got some, you know, because I, I Phil Phil McKnight talked about this. I think last week's on last Friday. He's like, you know. We have a visceral reaction to that because if, if like um, you know Apple's like, hey, we got a truckload of these unsold iPhones, we're just gonna throw on the incinerator. Like people get pissed off, like, hey, they got some, you know, a bunch of these extra phones that nobody wanted, so they're just gonna chuck them. Right. Like, you, would you be mad about that? But we see like d guitars. It's like that's a guitar. I think I would actually be upset about that because there are tons of people who. Especially in homeless situations or in battered situations where they would need to be able to call 911. And even if your phone doesn't work, it can still call 911. Yeah. And pick up a number. So if they would just say, okay, hey, we're just, like you said, why not donate them to charity? Why not say, okay, every single mu music program is getting, every single music program, especially inner cities, are getting brand new guitars. Yeah. Granted, their guitars no one wanted to buy. The public was like, we hate this. Yes, none of the spoiled guitar guys who wanted specific specs and we didn't want it. But a little kid who's never touched a guitar in yeah, a day yeah. in their life would love to have sure. any kind of guitar. Just like they wouldn't, yeah. you know, any doesn't matter what brand Dude, it is. Dude, I would have taken they, one. Because they like, never nobody have... wants these, so we're just going to burn them. Like, just send me one then. Right. I'll play it. Exactly. I mean, I'll take so a free guitar. So that's the kind of mentality yeah. is that it's such a wasteful, such a wasteful American thing to do. It, it is. And so I'm kind of like, part of me is like, that was stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't wait. Now, another part of me is, as a business owner and as a person, it's like, it's you can't tell me what to do with my property. Right. If I want to take my property well, yeah, outside and set it on fire, that is my right. Right. Because it's mine. Right. I can do whatever the heck. It's an American thing to do. I can do whatever I want to do with my stuff. And you can't tell me what to do with my stuff. Right. Just like I can't tell you what to do with your stuff. Right. Right. If Just you like were, if you bought that guitar and turned around and burned it. I can't get mad at you for that. I mean, I guess I can, but it's like, it was yours to do with whatever you wanted with. Like, it's if you have furniture on in your, all levels. Yeah. So you've got to be okay with people doing what they want with their property. Right. 
And you have to be okay with that because that's the American way. You, you know, yeah. Like, so there's part of, there's that part where it's like, if I want to take my desk over here that I, and if I don't want to give it away and I would rather bury it in the dirt, mm -hmm. that is my right to do that. And you it's can't insane, infringe, but, but it is my right. right. You can't infringe on my right to do what I want with my stuff. Right. So in, from that standpoint, Gibson has the right to do whatever they want with their stuff. Right. Now, if they want to give it away to charity, they can do that. If they want to set it on fire and destroy it because for whatever and reason... Dance around it. Yeah. <laughs> make it. Completely naked. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they can do yet that. Yet again, they're right. It's their right to do that. Now, right. you know, now people do this all the time. I mean, PRS does this. They'll have a guitar that comes out. Nope. Doesn't meet our spec. They'll saw it in half. Mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't meet our standard. It cannot leave the factory, which would have been like, okay. It so, meets my standard, though. Yeah, I have we, very yeah. low standards. <laughs> have, yeah. They either send it back and fix it, or if they can't fix it, they destroy it because they right. have a reputation. It's like, we, we can't put out this product that is not up to par of what we have set as. When you buy a PRS, mm -hmm. this is the level you get. Right. Now, can I get mad at PRS for having a guitar that's got a blim in their eyes that I'm like, but I'll t I would take that. I mean, I don't want to pay for it, but I would take it. Right. <laughs> Versus You're just going to go ahead and chunk it. Yeah. And I'll take it before you chunk it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, companies do this all the time. Yeah, I think we would be very uh, I mean, mortified and horrified store... at the amount that stores... We worked at Pizza You know how much dough we threw away at the end of the day? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. At the end of the day, we had like stacks of dough that were like, we can't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Chuck it, throw it in the garbage. It's like, well, why don't you just run it through the oven, cook it real quick, and give it to somebody? It's like, well, there's nobody here to give it to. Right. But, you know, this is our product that we bought. You know, I, there is it's no just, one to give it to. It's just a loss of, it's a you, it's understood a loss. loss of being in business, period. Yeah. I get I get all sides of the, of the, of the frustration. But this is the... Now, the, why they did it with a bulldozer, like right. laid them all out flat. I think that was for show. Yeah. I mean, it's like, no, it's not like, yeah, let's go toss them in the wood chipper. Right. You know, or go like, hey, we got a big dumpster out back. Just go check them yeah. in the dumpster. Yeah, or they have those those hands that roll that, in that just... Yeah, <laughs> just destroy it, you know. Why run over Grinders. them with a bulldozer like a monster truck thing? Yeah. Like, that's... Showy. That's way showy. And, like, why would... That's a lot of work to lay them... Because they're all laid out flat. Like, someone had to go lay them all out on the ground in a row. Well, maybe the guys who were, you know, maybe Gibson themselves... Didn't hand a memo down. It's like, okay, I want you to destroy these guitars, but this is exactly how we want you to destroy it. Oh, yeah. Maybe the dudes running the forklifts were like, yeah, we're supposed to destroy these gu guitars, but wouldn't it be fun? You know what would be a fun way to destroy these? And 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 this is how my kind of devil's advocate brain kind of works. Hearing how Gibson treats their employees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you knew that either you're about to get laid off or that you knew that whatever, however, whatever, in parentheses, insert scenario, mm -hmm. um, was happening to you and you knew that what was going on and you hear what's going on because it concerns your company, the company that you're a part of. Just like when Ryan was a part of Slut Comfort and all the negative press came through, we heard about all the negative press about Slut Comfort. Not a lot, but we heard mm -hmm. about it. And you're hearing about this as a Gibson employee and you have this moment where... Hey, dispose kinda, of these. It's kind of fortuitous where you're like, yeah, we'll dispose of them. Let's do it like this. You know what would be fun? And said friend was helped you record it, you know, like you were recording it and running out like these. Yeah. I can see that being more likely than Gibson themselves sending out a memo and saying, hey, I want you to destroy these Firebird X's and this is exactly how I want you to destroy, destroy them. Lay them out in a row and run over them in uniform pattern and making yeah. you know like I can see that being the yeah. deal. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's kind of when I was when I first saw it and heard about it, and people are fired up about. It, I can't believe you should give those away, and I'm like, yeah, sure, that's yeah, yeah. I and I, I feel that, that too. Been, that would have like, been good. It would have been much better PR move to like, hey, we got all these unsold guitars, nobody wants, we got to dispose of them, so. You know, we'll give them to you know music programs and schools or or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, right? But yeah, I don't know. 
who knows what the, the, the thought is or who knows what the flaw was that they decided they had to, or maybe there was no flaw. Yeah. It's supply and demand. But then you have to go back and think after a certain ball gets rolling about a, a product that you have that may have a fault to it, a, you know, a default, if it, whether, it, whether the bridge is a certain way, it cracks too easily or the pickups fall off too. It's like you knowingly gave that product away to somebody a and they had, product. yes, and they had issues with it. You're going to cause more backlash than just destroying the product. Could have been like, would. yeah, we donated these guitars. It's like, Hey, we're going to donate these shoes to kids in the, uh, you know, underprivileged, whatever. And they're like, yeah, but these shoes all have turds in them. Right. Or the they, shoelaces are broken. Or the shoe, the shoes. You gave us crappy you know, shoes. You get like a day out of them and the whole soles fall off. You know, it's yeah, like my kid, was, my kid that... was playing this and just tuning the guitar and the whole, all the tuning pegs just fall off or something. You know, that, that kind of PR is a million times worse than, you gave away a than crappy just product. running over a guitar. You donate. It's people. better to destroy it than it is to give Sub something that product. will devalue your brand. Exactly. That's probably what they were thinking. Because you have to think like... 10 it's like playing chess you have to think many steps ahead before you make that yeah. one move and if it balanced out we're like you know i'd rather just but i think people are like them. what have could, fun with it dude. what could have been wrong with them you know like because we buy guitars people sell relic guitars like it looks like it's been had the crap beat out of it it cost extra right because we've made it look like it's just like beat relics up. jeans or something it's got a crack in it yeah you know who knows Tor the world money for will never jeans. know so i don't know i'm kind of one side of me is I, I see it from the point of like people who are mad about it, but the other side of me is like, it's their stuff, mm -hmm. they can do what they want. You can't tell me what to do. It's my stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of I kind of feel it that way too. So, what do you guys think? You tell and us. I don't care. Yeah, Gibson can do whatever the f they want to do. Ding. Yeah. And they're going to obviously yes. uh -huh. and not really care what people think. They don't really care what we think because nope. they know we're going to buy it anyways. Yep. <laughs> or something. Who knows? Yes. All right, Great. that's all the questions for this week. I'm glad we shot it in here because the air conditioning has been nice. There's two big events mm -hmm. up in here. Open and here. so it is, last week we were super sweaty. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so anyways, that is all of it for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a comment about any of the questions below, put that below. If you have a question for next week, please type that below uh, for next week's ask rna we'll try our best to answer mm -hmm. um we need a secret hashtag of the day because if you made it this far mm -hmm. in the video which has been probably an hour now i don't even know yeah. we'll find out uh, if you made it all the way through this entire video watched everything you are a legend and so mm -hmm. to let us know that you made it because the analytics on youtube does i can see kind of what the average duration view is mm -hmm. but i can't see oh you know 15 people made it all the way through right you know or 300 people made it to the end. You know, 300 people stopped halfway through. Right, right. 7,000 people stopped after one minute. You know, I, I, you know, I can't say all that stuff. But if you'll leave us that little hashtag, that lets us know which of you guys and gals made it all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, <laughs> the hashtag of the day should be... What do you think it should be? I thought you were about to say something. I don't know. Hashtag scary stares. <laughs> scary stairs that's a lot of s's I, okay it could be hashtag gibson destroyer too long too much way too much you just do like first monday or <laughs> hashtag first monday what what yeah or hashtag flea market no first monday, first monday is fine okay if you made it all the way to the end hashtag first monday we'll put it on the screen type that in your comment and we'll know you made it to the end true dead and we will think of you as a legend and uh Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for the next video. We got more coming. I am slowly but surely getting caught up on all my editing. So much. There's like seven weeks of vlogs I have to edit and upload for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming soon. Yes, it is. All right. And we will see y'all in the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. And you need the music. We need to keep it alive for the next generation. Those guys back there. Playing Firebird X's. Mm -hmm. Or I kind of want to buy one now. No, you don't. No, I don't. All right. And we will see y'all next time. Bye. So excited.
Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> Cumber who? Yes. Hashtag. Benny Cumberbun. 